everyone and welcome back to another video about all things Chinese. Today I want to share something with you that has quickly become my new favorite thing. Chinese cloisonne art. If you're Chinese, chances are you probably don't need an explanation of what that is. But if you've never heard of it before, well, sit down, relax, and let me introduce you to this magnificent form of Chinese art. The earliest securely dated Chinese cloisonne is from the reign of the Ming Xuande Emperor dating back to 1426. However, cloisonne is recorded during the previous Yuan Dynasty and it has been suggested that the technique was introduced to China at that time via the western province Yunnan. So what exactly is it? It's basically the technique of creating designs with a colored glass paste placed within enclosures made of copper or bronze wires, which have been bent or hammered into the desired pattern. Cloisonne is known for its intricate designs and vibrant colors. It is often used to create decorative objects such as vases, bowls, and plates. Traditional cloisonne, as well as cloisonne painting, is a very time-consuming art form. It can take months or even years to create a single piece. The artist must carefully plan the design and then execute it with great precision. So how exactly did it come to be that I started enjoying this time-consuming but stunning form of art? Well, it all began during the May Day holidays of 2023. We walked past this DIY shop and Alia wanted to make something. I asked the lady what would be age appropriate since at the time she was only five. The lady said, So I figured, okay, if she says so. And after looking around the store, Alia chose what she wanted. The first step was to draw the image onto a wooden block with pencil. This alone took forever because of the specific picture Alia chose. She had to draw it off of their projector and I quickly realized I made a huge mistake. I thought this was going to be a quick 30 minute DIY craft. After you have your image, you use a special glue and carefully glue along the lines of your drawing. It's important to not use too much glue and you have to wait two to three minutes for the glue to set a little before you can continue. After that, you use thin golden metal strips and place them on the lines of your drawing, bending and shaping them into place, often cutting where you need to. This can be incredibly time consuming, especially for a five-year-old. That particular day, we had been there for about an hour when Alia decided she was giving up and I told the lady we will come back another day. Well, six months passed and one day we happened to be in the same shopping center and I decided to give it another go. But this time I chose a new DIY project for Alia and I would take on the task of finishing what she started. And the rest is history. I absolutely fell in love with it. Now remember, traditional cloisonne is different than cloisonne painting, but the fact is, anyone watching this who might be interested to try this would most likely only be able to do the painting as well. Now, if you're lucky enough to be living in China, you probably already know where you can get the most amazing cloisonne art kits, or even the supplies you need to create your own designs. If you guessed Taobao, congrats, you're a winner! The amount of kits at very competitive prices are endless, the only bad thing is there are so many great ones, it's hard to actually choose which ones you want. I've also made my own by finding images online and just buying the different supplies from Taobao. I have a few projects that I'm making at home, but I do still love going to the DIY shop to make some, even though it's more expensive. I love going there and watch other people work. I love talking to the older ladies who make these massive intricate pieces. And most of all, I love being able to go there with my daughter. She chooses some more age-appropriate arts and we can spend time together doing something we both love. Since a young age, I always enjoy DIY arts and crafts, even though I don't have an artistic bone in my body. I've always loved it and I used to spend all my money on DIY things. And well, now I finally have a little buddy who can join me. The first piece I finished was of course the one that Alia had started, so it is not perfect. But in the end, I think it turned out quite nicely and I had it framed to hang up in her room. Since the kitty looked a little lonely, I decided to go back to make a friend for it. This particular one I finished over the course of two days, probably around five hours in total. 
Drawing it was quick and easy since they had a printout and I just used carbon paper to copy it onto the board. After that I started the gluing process, which was also quite quick since the picture I chose didn't have a lot of detail. And then the coloring process started. Alright, so for my second one I chose this one, but a square frame and I'm going to change the color of the kitty because the other kitty I made is also white. When it comes to the color it's really hard for me to make this kind of mixed color because I'm just not artistic at all. So I'm going to try my best to make it look like this but it's probably not going to come out looking like that because I'm just not artistic at all. And mixing colors, it seems so easy when the Laoshe here was doing it. And I was like, oh, that's easy. And when I tried, I was like, this is hard. Okay, you guys, so I finished my flower, my blending. And I want to ask you, what do you think of my blending skills? And please be kind, okay? When I finished coloring the flower, I couldn't help but feel like things were not totally centered. And after trying to center the color a bit more, I realized the problem was actually that my design of the petals and the inside of the flower was not properly centered. So I tried fixing it with color as much as I could. I chose to make my flower more red than the other picture because my cat's body is white and I didn't want the white to be so overwhelming. So I added more red. The last part is just the kitty's body. And here's the comparison. What do you think? I had the new picture framed the same way as the first one and they're a happy couple now for my daughter's room. I've continued to go back to the DIY store and every time I go I meet this girl working on this large piece and it seems some couples have also started enjoying it. Apart from that I'm also working on multiple pieces at home. It really makes me feel so relaxed. I usually turn on a favorite TV show and can spend hours at night sitting at my table carefully working on it. So tell me down below in the comments, do you know this ancient Chinese art form? Are you interested to give it a try? Have you tried it before? And also tell me what you guys think of my masterpieces. And please be kind, okay? I'm literally still a newbie at this and I've only been doing it for like a couple of months and it's even hard to find the time to do it and to practice and to, you know, improve my skills. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and that you learned something new today. And be sure to tell me down below in the comments what other traditional Chinese things you would like to learn about. Until next time, bye!